fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver, the Lone Ranger. Cattle raising was the first great industry in the western United States. But with the passing of the open range, shortly after the Civil War, thousands of farmers swarmed into the new territory. The ranchers resented their intrusion and tried to drive them out. If it had not been for the courage and resourcefulness of the masked rider of the plains, the era of bloodshed and violence might have lasted for many years. It was the Lone Ranger, more than any other man, who brought peace and security... Law and order to a lawless frontier. Return with us now to those thrilling days when the West was young. From out of the past come the thundering hoof beats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver! There's going to be trouble in the range country. We've got to hurry! Hey, old Silver! Away! <laughs> a small cabin, about ten miles west of Centerville, went up in flames. Kessler, the manager of the neighboring boxy outfit, struggled with old Lige Dobson, the cabin's owner. Lige's wife was wringing her hands in despair, but the two cowhands Kessler had brought with him seemed to enjoy the situation as much as their employer. Let me go, God. God, let me go. There's things inside i got to save. Let me go. You crazy loco, did you hold still? Everything we own is burning up. Well, you can't do nothing about it now. Yeah, quit trying to get away. <laughs> Shucks, boss. If he's so all fired anxious to go in there, let him. <laughs> It'll serve him no, right. No, but why should we stop him? No, you got to let me go back from there. No, you just get hurt. Please. I can save a little something. Wait. There, you see? The whole roof caved in. If I'd let you go like you asked, you'd have been under it. I almost wish I was. Oh, nice. Well, why shouldn't I? What have we got left? We ain't got a thing. No cash to build with again. What crops we had all trampled down by this pole catch critters. We're, we're flat bust. <laughs> well, Lige, if you'd listened to me, maybe this would never have happened. Then you admit you set that fire on purpose. No such thing. But you just now, said Lige, you listen you... here. Don't go saying things maybe you'll be sorry for later. What do I care what I say? I ain't got nothing more to lose. Hey, you listen. I never saw that kerosene can sitting there when I threw away that match. You think I'd have thrown a match if I'd seen where it was going? Don't talk crazy. But you done it after I'd ordered you to get outside. You was just a little hasty. You know very no, well but that... you remember. I told you when you're filing this piece, there weren't no place for a homesteader. Told you then no good had ever come of it. This ain't a homesteader's country. <laughs> Well, look at all the other folks like you and your missus have had bad luck. For more of your accidents. Now, didn't I tell you, you to can't shut tell up? me nothing. Kessler, I know you through and through. You're as low down as a snake and as scheming as a coyote. You're a dirty crook. You're a low dirty... <gasps> There'll be enough of that. You, you hit me. If you wasn't as old as you are, I'd have drilled you. 
Lige, don't ever talk that way to me again. It ain't healthy. Don't you hurt, Lige. Don't you dare. That depends on him, ma'am. Kessler? Well? You're a younger man than me, and you got two of your gun hands along. <laughs> so what I'd like to do, I can't. But there's something you're going to do, and that's pay me for what you made me lose here today. Oh, am I? Now, whatever put a loco notion like that in your head? It's only right and fair. Shucks, you wouldn't charge me for what happened accidental, would you? You've got to pay. I do? I tell you what, Lige. You think I have to? You take me to court and sue. <laughs> then I'll give you whatever the court decides. Yeah, no, we can't do that. No? We've no money. Can't hire a lawyer, huh? Of course we can't. Well, then I'd say that's just too bad. <laughs> I don't know in that case what you can do. Just forget it, I reckon. You're a rotten skunk. Look. Yeah, boss. Watch this fella. Next time he lets his tongue get away with him, bust him one. <laughs> Why, sure, boss. You bet. Then let's see you try it. Oh, what it's a mass man, boss. That redskin. Yes, sir. I heard you give Hawk an order just now. I said, let's see him try it. Mister, who are you? That's none of your business. You can't. And I advise you not to reach for that gun. Well, yes. take it. Oh. You asked for it. Now to watch these other fellas. I uh, can't do it. Lines. Y- yes, stranger. You say Kessler burnt your cabin? Well, well, he... Speak up. You've nothing to fear. Lige, I warn you, if you start to shooting off your mouth... Quiet. I'll... Lige, go on. He did. He did set it afire. And I know doggone well it was a purpose. I see. What was the value of what you lost? Huh? How much would it cost you to replace the cabin and what was in it? Well, well I don't know offhand. It wouldn't be a cent under $500. You're sure that would cover it? Well, well, maybe 600 That's better. All right, Kessler, pay up. What's that? You heard me and you heard Lige. Six hundred. Hand it over. Say, what right have you got? Here's my right. Now, uh, oh, wait. Don't shoot. Then pay. I, uh, why, sure I'll pay. Sure. Uh, just as soon as I can get back the ranch. You pay now. Uh, well, what with? Think I carry that much cash on me? I do. Then you're... Cr- hey, watch out. I thought so. The money belt under that vest. Six hundred, Kessler. But this cash ain't mine. It belongs to the owner. Then you can make it up to him. But I tell you... I won't argue. I have much patience with your kind. Either pay or... Now, wait. I'll pay. Never said I wouldn't, did I? Quit aiming that gun at me. Sure, I'll pay. Quickly. I was supposed to buy cattle with this. I'm not interested in that. Here you are, Lige. One, two, three, four, five, six hundred. There. Gosh. All right. Hit leather and travel. Take these gun hands with you. We're going. Come on, fellas. Yeah, yeah. And Kessler. Yeah? If you're thinking of returning when Tato and I have left, don't. You may find we're not as far away as you'd hoped. Mister, you haven't seen the last of me. Come on, boys. Stranger, I... I don't know how to thank you. You and the engine hadn't come along. Never mind that. Lines, I think you can give me some information. Tonto and I heard there was trouble in the district, and that's why we're here. But what's it all about? Just the same old story, stranger. Yes? It's just a case of cattlemen again homesteaders. Mix the two and there's all this trouble. But there's just one cattle outfit in this section. Uh-huh, the Box E, the one Kessler manages. There's all the range it needs. Sure. And why This all ain't the... a fight for rangeland, stranger. It's politics. Oh. In a couple months, there's going to be a county election. I see. Managing the Box E that owns most of the land in the county... Kessler figures he ought to run the county. But even if us homesteaders don't own as much land as more of us, we can outvote him easy. Less than he can run us out between now and then. So that's it. In a nutshell. You say Kessler, but after all, he's just the manager. What about the owner? What has he got to do with this, and who is he? Well, I can answer just part of that, stranger. Yes? Man owns the box. He's a fellow named Davis. Uh, but he, he don't even live in the state. He, he, he got another place called over to Cheyenne, I've been told. I don't think he ever comes here. And you don't know if Kessler's acting by his orders or not? I couldn't tell you such a thing as that. All I know is some of us wrote him a couple times about Kessler, but he, he never even answered. But stranger. Well? There's coming to a boil here. You mark my words. Kessler and his gun hands are going to shove us around just so long, then there's going to be the dickens to pay. Yes, that's what I've feared. Here, Silver. Call Scout Tunnel. Oh, uh, here, Scout. You have to leave. Yes. But Lige. Uh-huh. Don't worry about the future. This is your home. Stay here and stick it out. You and your friends are going to win. You got some special reason for saying that? Perhaps not now. Well, then what do you... find I'm right, Lige. If you stay, you won't regret it. Come, Tutter. Uh, Adios. Goodbye, Scout. Come on, Silver. Get him up, Scout. Come on, old boy. Come on. Get him 
Watch out. Shadow, I'm leaving you. Where you go? I'm heading for Cheyenne. I'm finding the owner of the box E. Oh, that long trip. Two weeks each way. Uh, While I'm gone... What time to do? Make camp close to Lige's place. Watch out for trouble. If Kessler attempts to strike back, protect them. Uh, me do it. Think of all the information you can. If trouble's coming, there's going to be a showdown between Kessler and the homesteaders. Try to learn when and where. Uh, I'll return as soon as I can and pick up your trail. And here's where we part. Uh, Get him up, Scout. Hail Silver Hoy! The Lone Ranger's great stallion made the journey to Cheyenne in less than two weeks. As night was falling, exactly 12 days after he had left Tonto, the masked man guided his mount toward a large, rambling ranch house just outside of town. Inside, writing by lamplight at a desk, was a man in his early middle age. So absorbed was he in his work that when he heard the door open behind him, he spoke without raising his head. Is that you, Jim? I'm sorry, Jim, but I'm busy. You'll have to... Good evening. Not for... No. I thought... That I was your brother, eh? Yes, I... Look here, what do you want? Not what you seem to think. This is no holdup. If you're worried, I can promise you your money's safe. And what is it you... I spent the day inquiring about you. When I first started for your place, I had an idea you were the kind of man I dislike. I don't understand. I imagine you don't. I was judging you by one of your men. But I find that around Cheyenne, you have a decent reputation. This this is ridiculous. I, I demand that you get out. You're not in a position to demand anything. Well, I... Evans, tell me something. Why do you employ a man like Kessler? And why do you stand for the things he's doing? Why do I... Wait. I'm beginning to see. You know Kessler, huh? I've met him. You like him? I don't. Yes... No, I think I do see. I suppose you're a friend of the homesteaders in that district. I am? Mm-hmm. Well, I've had some letters from your friends. It seems they don't care for Kessler's loyalty to my interests. They're not very logical. They attempt to crowd me out, then expect me to get rid of a manager because he's doing his best to hold my range. How long has it been since you visited the Boxy, Evans? Several years. Kessler's managed efficiently. There's been no need for me to go there. You should. Perhaps you'd get a different picture of the situation. Kessler's been rough on your friends? If you put it that way. Uh, what do they expect? That we'll surrender without a fight? Surrender what? You've nothing they want. My rain? Nonsense. You've got grays and despair. No one's tried to file on any part of it. Evidently, Kessler's been careful to tell you only what he thinks is safe for you to know. The fight isn't over land, Evans. Your manager is attempting to run out the homesteaders simply so he can make himself the political boss of the county. I don't believe it. Why not investigate? Why should I? The boxy is making money. I trust Kisley. I see no necessity for, for spying on him. That isn't quite what you mean. Eh? What you do mean, Evans, is that you see no necessity for investigating when it may force you to open your eyes to some uncomfortable facts. What you mean is that you pride yourself on your honesty. And like a lot of other so-called honest men, you feel what you don't know won't hurt you. That's a lie. You have a man managing the boxy who's making you money. You're afraid if you learned the truth about him, you'd have to let him go. Uh, you... Evans, you're a moral coward. Hey, Thunder, I won't stand that kind of talk from you or any man. No? You said I'm afraid to learn the truth. You are, Evans. You are. Hey, uh, you... you... All right, I'll show you. <laughs> The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
Now to continue our story. Two more days elapsed before the Lone Ranger left Cheyenne. Then, on a morning almost four weeks later, he rode into the camp where Tonto had been waiting for him. Hi, Kimo Sabe! Hi! Oh, oh, my silver! Oh, boy! Oh, 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 man! It's plenty glad to see you. It's been a long journey, Tonto. Heap long. My time wasn't wasted. Oh, what you find out? The one thing I hope for most of all, Evans isn't a bad fellow. He's been satisfied with Kessler and unwilling to ask too many questions. But Kessler's plan to dominate the county is his own idea. Evans not only isn't backing him, but wasn't aware of it until I told him. Mm. What do now? I couldn't bring Evans with me. Kessler would simply cover his trail, and Evans is too skeptical to believe anything less than direct evidence. Ah. He'd expect the homesteaders to complain and would allow for their natural antagonism towards cattlemen. Not bad. No, Tonto, it isn't. What you mean? The fact that Evans couldn't come gave me a better idea. Huh? When we finish with Kessler, he's going to have a surprise he'll be a long time forgetting. Another week went by before Kessler learned of a newcomer to the county and decided to call on him. The following day, he reined in before the homesteader's cabin and... Oh, boy. Oh, there. Oh. <coughs> Stay there, boy. Oh. Oh, howdy. Howdy. I'm Kessler. Maybe you've heard of me. You Jim Snave? Yeah, sure. That's the name, huh? What do you mean? Well, Snave, it ain't common. Don't know as I've ever heard it before. Well, it don't matter. Well, my boy said as how he'd been told you'd staked yourself to a homestead over this way, so I thought I'd drop by. Come in? Uh, thanks. I don't mind if I do. You say, young fella. Huh? We ever meet some other place? I don't know. Have we? Stand there in the light a second, just like you are. Yeah. Say, that's funny. Seems like I ought to know you. And again, it seems like I don't. Well, maybe I remind you of someone else. Yeah. Yeah, maybe you do. That's funny. Well, a man runs into lots of folks, put them in mind of somebody else. Guess that's it. Wondering why I stopped by, are you? Well, that's your... Reckon if you've heard of me at all, you've heard I ain't supposed to be very friendly toward homesteaders. Well, yes, I... I have heard that. <laughs> ain't a word of truth in it, young fella, ain't a word. Would I be riding out of my way to give you some good advice if I didn't feel friendly? Uh, advice? <laughs> Yeah, something I thought you ought to know. Uh-huh. Before you get too settled here. I mean, you wouldn't want to plan on too much and then find you wasn't staying, would you? Not staying? Of course I'm staying. Sure, you say that now, but you'll soon be changing your mind. Lots of homesteaders come here for and change their minds just like you're going to. You see, this ain't the right place for settlers. Why, the, the soil's fine. I didn't mean that. And just what do Sort of hard to explain. It's... Well, it's just the way some things are. You ever gamble any? Well, uh, I have a little. Well, then maybe you'll savvy. Now, take me at poker. There's one hand I can never win at, no matter how much or how little I bet on it, or how many's in the game. Yes? That's three kings. Lucky for some folks, but just ain't lucky for me. There's no explaining it. <laughs> I'm afraid I don't see what you're getting at. Well, it's that way with this county and the folks that try to homestead in it. Soil's fine, just like you said. Railroad ain't far away, so if a fellow's got a crop, he can always get it to market. There's rain about when you need it. Never enough wind to carry off your topsoil. But just what is that... But, uh... Things happen. Folks have bad luck. Why, three families I can think of had their houses burned down couple had fine standing crops. But just before harvest, somehow or other, there was cattle got the notion to stampede right through them. <laughs> of course, there weren't nothing saved. Oh. Well, I could tell you other things that happened round and about for the next hour, if I was a mind, huh? But 
I guess you see what I mean. Just a pack of bad luck and no explaining it. You're sure there isn't? Eh? I mean, you're sure none of those accidents couldn't have been... Well, not so accidental after all. You mean somebody might have caused them on purpose? I think I did. Well, gosh, who except in the cattlemen would have anything against homesteaders? No one, I guess. Well, there you are. I'm the only cattleman in the whole county. Yes. That was what I was getting at. That's what... Hey, young fella. Are you hitting Kessler, that... Kessler, I came here to find out something. Well? I was told you've been going too far in your fight against the settlers. You've been too free with your threats. Now, listen I'm to me. I'm not exactly a fool. Put it any way you want. What you've been saying to me is a threat. I've been telling well, you... I found out that much. Now I'm staying on to see if you've actually got the nerve to try to put those threats into effect. Why, you spabbing young cub, I'll... Careful. I'll take you in hand and teach you some manners. You ain't getting smart with me. Get out. You can't... Get out. Make me. Fine. <clears throat> oh. Don't slap another. I- I'll drill you so full of holes you... What? Kessler, it looks as though last time we met you didn't believe me. The, the mask man. It's about time you learned you can't do anything around here, I won't find out about... Hey, let go of me. Let go of me. I tell you, let go. One of these days, I'll give you what you deserve. Hey, stranger, when you do... Yes? Boot him one for me. <laughs> <laughs> Lefty, come here. Boss, what do you want? What's wrong, boss? Hey, who gave you that shine here? Any of your business. Well, Shut well, up and listen. Keep still, Lefty. Yeah, boss. There's a troublemaker coming to this county. Huh? That slave hombre. I want you fellas to round up the boys. We're calling on that gent tonight for a lynching bee. Hey, boss, you can't do that. You can hang a fella if you catch him butchering your beef, can't you? Sure, Well, but that's you what can't. we're going to catch him at. Now stir your stumps and get a move on. I want every man brought in off the range. Do you understand what I want, lads? For sure do, stranger. Will you do it? After what you've done for me when that skunk burnt my house? If I didn't, I ought to be horsewhipped. Then on your way. You'll have to make time. Right. And we'll meet you? At my camp. I've told you where it is. Look for us by nightfall. Get up, the Cayuse. Get up. Get up there. All right, old fellow. Tonight you'd see the end of Kessler in this county. Come on, boy. Hurry, old fellow. Hurry. <laughs> It was after dark when a group of horsemen rode slowly toward the shack occupied by Jim Snave. Kessler was in the lead. When he finally spoke, he kept his voice low. He's there. Just seen his shadow when he passed between the lamp and the window. Uh huh. Where's Lefty? Right here, boys. Got that beef in the hides? Sure. Throw him in the shed and then follow us in. Get one of the boys to help you. Tim there can give you a hand. That's our evidence. <laughs> you betcha. You. you better pull up. We're close enough. We don't want to give him any warning so he can run for it. Go, oh boy. Oh, Eddie, boy. Eddie, boy. Eddie, boy. All right, come on. All right. He's moving around again. Quiet. All right. Draw your guns. Stick up your hands, you right dirty right cattle thief. Heist the product. What the Caught you, you with the evidence right on your plate. You'll hang for this, young fella. Cattle thieves don't last in this county no time at all. Hey, what is this? What are you talking about, Kessler? You calling me a thief? You didn't mistake me. Hey, boss, I found a couple more hides out in the shed there, beside the ones you've seen. This zombie must have been killing beef for all his neighbors. You seen the brands? All box E. You other boys can swear to seeing box E hides out there? Yeah, boss. Well, that's all that will be needed, then. This is a law-abiding county, and I make the law. Well, string them up now. Kessler, you got any last words? You really mean this? Or is this just a fool stunt to scare me out? What do you think? I think you're bluffing. Boys, grab him. Get back. Take your hands off me, you fool. Back, I tell you. The rope, Hawk. Put the rope on him here. We'll drag him out. Right. Stop it, Kessel. You don't know what you're doing. Shut that cow thief up. Now, hold him out. As 
the tree just beyond the horses, it'll do. All right, Every come on, man. Stand right where he is. Hey, the mask man. Get him, too. I want him more. I want this skunk. Try and take him. What the... The settlers. Hey. Every settler in the valley is along. Hey, hey, don't point them guns through the windows. Don't. We ain't fighting. Come in, man, and keep them covered. Oh, oh, this man's a cattle thief. You're interfering with justice. And I suppose I'm a cattle thief. I suppose that's why you ordered your men to take me. I tell hey, you... Release, Jim. I'm all right, friend. Kessler, you've had the guns on your side before. But tonight we got the drop on you as our night to howl. Now you listen and you listen good. You're leaving the county and you're leaving in a hurry. You're taking all these hired bullies with you. And if you ever show your face in these parts again, we'll slap it down for you. Try and make us go. We're running the box here and no bunch of homesteaders can make us leave it. Try it and you'll have a fight on your hands. I think you'll soon find out you're running nothing. What are you talking Tell about? Tell Jim. Kessler, you and these skunks with you are fired. What's more, if I find anything wrong with the way the boxy has been run, I'll have my brother prosecute you to the full extent of the law. What? Your brother? This is Jim Evans, your employer's younger brother. And if you'd have been half as smart as you claim to be, Kessler, you'd have caught on to it. Try spelling snave backwards and see what you get. Uh, 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 boss, it spells Evans. That's why I thought I'd seen you before. It's because you resemble your brother. <laughs> right. <laughs> now, if you know what's good for you... You'll make tracks. Now, wait, Mr. Evans. What we've done was just for your brother. He never authorized anything like this. He wouldn't have believed you capable of it. If the mask man here hadn't suggested my pretending to be a homesteader to get the evidence at first hand... <laughs> and the mask man even had it figured if Jim got tough with you, you'd try something like this to give yourself away. Yeah, but wait, Jim. I... I mean, Mr. Evans... You tried to hang me. No, no, wait. It was just a joke. A poor one. But I tell you... And now the joke's on you. Go ahead, men. They're yours. Ride them on a rail. Tar and feather them. Or do anything else you want, but get them out of this county. The story you have just heard is a copyrighted feature of The Lone Ranger Incorporated. <laughs>